Hello, and welcome back to City Skylines, Pittsburgh. In this episode, we're talking about urban freeways and how they divide cities, specifically the history of I-279 in the north side, known to some as the Parkway North. But first, I'm going to begin building the neighborhoods of East Allegheny and Troy Hill. Later in the video, I'll also be completing a few detail builds, like the Penn Brewery and the thriving German cultural district known as Pittsburgh's Deutschtown. Starting off today's episode, I'm building out some of the East Allegheny neighborhood east of I-279. I'm using a collection of row houses created by Smiley's, Dudemeister, and Chrysler, which are perfect for this area. If you've seen my videos before, you'll know that I usually link all the assets I use in my builds at the bottom of the screen. In this case, since I'm using such a variety of homes, I figured it'd be easier to instead just create a Steam collection of the assets I'm using. You can find all of these row house assets in the collection I've linked in the description below. The neighborhood I'm working on now was established in the late 1700s and called Allegheny City. A century later in the late 1800s, it was settled mostly by German immigrants looking for work in the nearby factories. Because of the neighborhood's demographics, the town became known as Deutschtown. The new residents in the area had built a thriving business district along East Ohio Street, and it became a popular destination. It would later become a historical district of Pittsburgh in 1984, recognized for its cultural significance to the city. But before it could be recognized as a historic neighborhood, it was split in two by the construction of I-279. This caused the neighborhood to suffer greatly from population loss, as residents were forced out for the freeway to be built, and lack of investment was made in the area. Today, the area is beginning to thrive once again, seeing new restoration projects as neighborhood activists began showing interest in revitalizing the area. You can see the results of these restoration attempts today, as the neighborhood has a good mix of historic buildings as well as some new construction and renovations. this neighborhood, I'm just trying to keep a moderate level of detail. I'm using Google Earth as always to try to capture the general feel of the area, but I'm not going to go into extreme detail like some of the other builds I've completed. I'm realizing now that I'm about 20 episodes into this build, and while I don't want to rush anything and I still have the goal of creating the most realistic American city and city skylines, I do eventually want to start revitalizing the city. If you're new to the series and this project, I'm recreating the city of Pittsburgh in one-to-one -one detail so that in part two of the project, I can try to bring new life to the city based on urbanist city planning principles. I've taken a lot of inspiration for this project from creators like Prez, as they've taken the game and pushed it to the limits of realism to try to showcase city planning topics and why they're so important in our everyday lives. This video was also heavily inspired by Prez's video on urban freeways. I definitely recommend checking that out if you haven't seen it yet. I think it covers some very important topics, and that's part of the reason why I wanted to apply the idea of that video to this series in Pittsburgh specifically. I'll go into the topic in more detail shortly as I cover the history of the city in part 2 of the video, but modern Pittsburgh is actually one of the most segregated cities in America, and city planning has a lot to do with that. These are serious topics and might even be a bit controversial to some, but I think it's important to acknowledge and understanding history is the first step in trying to figure out ways to improve our cities in the future.
So, as I mentioned earlier, the main theme of this video is freeways and how they affect the cities that we live in. I figured there was no better time to bring this up than while working on the north side. The north side of Pittsburgh is split right down the middle by 10 lanes of sunken freeway, but it wasn't always like this. In fact, this section of the Parkway North wasn't actually built until 1977. After doing some research on the freeway, it was easy to see why some consider it to be a controversial project. After nearly a decade of planning, in 1970 the Highway Administration allowed PennDOT planners to begin what's called right-of-way acquisition negotiations. This negotiation was not so much a negotiation, and more so a forced relocation with payment. Homeowners were given $5,000 in payment in return for demolishing their homes to make way for the freeway, a dollar amount equivalent to around $38,000 today. Later, the payments increased to $15,000 in an attempt to encourage the residents to vacate, but it was not before much controversy unfolded as it took years for PennDOT to acquire the properties needed for removal. One of the most famous holdouts being St. Boniface Church, which refused PennDOT's offers to be relocated. In 1976, the city completed negotiations, and after spending nearly $19 million for the relocation of 1,400 properties, the construction could finally begin. But this story starts even earlier than that. In fact, the Parkway North was first devised by none other than the infamous Robert Moses. Robert Moses was one of the most significant urban planners of the 1950s. In New York, he was known for his huge successful infrastructure projects that shaped the modern city today. He was involved in parkway constructions across the country, redefining how people traveled across America. But his same devotion to what in the past was seen as progress, labeled urban renewal or the revival of cities, has at the same time caused his reputation to be tarnished. To build many of these freeways, urban developers used maps like this one, a practice known as redlining. These maps were influential in defining which areas were high value and which areas were prime for renewal. Looking further into these maps, it's easy to see a trend of planners assigning areas with poor, immigrant, black, and Jewish populations as hazardous, or low value. These maps also influence how banks provided home loans, allowing them to introduce biased mortgage lending practices, increasing inequality and racial segregation in communities. These maps further influence where freeways were built in the 1950s, and as you can guess, majority were built through the same neighborhoods labeled as low value. You can find a lot more information about this phenomenon from organizations like Segregation by Design, which explores redlining and the practices of institutional racism in city planning in depth on their website and Instagram page. I've linked those in the description below if you'd like to learn more. In Pittsburgh specifically, these neighborhoods marked in red saw a persistent effect from these policy implementations in the 1950s. From the destruction of entire portions of neighborhoods to a lack of mortgage financing in areas like the Hill District and Homewood, neighborhoods still suffer from population loss, uneven development, and the effects of poverty. The city must look to the future to fix these issues that persist today to create a more equitable city. Bringing things back to freeways, and specifically I-279, there's a few ways that Pittsburgh could begin to heal the scars of the city's past. One such solution has already been completed elsewhere in the city, near another historically affected neighborhood east of downtown, known as the Hill District. In 2019, the city decided to place a cab park over the I-579 Crosstown Boulevard section of freeway. This allowed for the successful reconnection of the neighborhood to downtown. I talk about this specific park more in Episode 9, The Hill District, and I've recreated it in-game as well in this video, which I've linked above. Freeway cab parks have many hidden benefits, while also being a solution that's easy to sell to policy and budget makers. They cover the source of pollution from freeways, leading to cleaner quality air nearby. They reduce traffic noise. They also allow for reconnection of city grids by creating easier pedestrian and bike crossings in areas that may be currently too dangerous for many to comfortably cross. Lastly, they can allow for the creation of new green spaces and parks in cities where currently there is just concrete reducing the effect of what's known as heat islands, quite literally making our cities cooler places to live. I've linked a video above if you want to learn more about this urban heat island effect. I think in this case, the best option for the future of I-279 may be to create a cab park similar to what's seen over Crosstown Boulevard. It would help reconnect Troy Hill and the East Allegheny neighborhoods to downtown, reduce the pollution and noise in the surrounding area, 
as well as create some additional park space, most likely increasing nearby property values and quality of life. But let me know in the comments below what you think. Should the freeway be capped, or should the change be even more radical, like replacing the freeway with a lower capacity roadway, transit priorities, or remove the freeway entirely? Comment below and I will consider your ideas as I take on the revitalization of the city in part 2 of my project. The area that I'm working on here is next to the Heinz factories along the Allegheny River. Some of the former factory buildings have been converted into apartments, but as you can see, there's a lot of dead space right next to it. I'm placing down some minor details to try to get that abandoned, industrial style look on top of these parking lots, and adding some props like trailers and prop fences. This is the kind of no man's land or underutilized space you often see in cities near major freeway interchanges. This area could probably see some improvement with redevelopment as it's right along the riverfront and has some good views of the city. Now, I'm working on one of the more detailed builds of the episode. This is the Penn Brewery at the bottom of Troy Hill. This was a pretty fun build to recreate, and I had to get a bit creative in procedural objects to take it on. It's not perfect, but I try to capture the overall look of the building by mixing a few PO assets. I also used the vanilla arch asset and some additional props for the front entrance awning and built a detailed storage yard next door. To begin wrapping up today's episode, I'm building out the neighborhood of Troy Hill. This neighborhood built into the steep hillside sharing the same name was a fun one to try to recreate. It's always a good challenge working against the terrain and city skylines. If you want some tips to have your hillside builds looking a little bit better, I recommend first to use assets with a smaller footprint. These row homes are perfect for hillsides. Larger assets will deform more of the terrain, making it a bit more difficult to blend in on steep slopes. I also recommend using procedural objects in cases where you're working in tighter areas and don't want to disturb the terrain as much. Other tricks you can use are things like terraforming networks, slow profile networks, and retaining walls. <laughs> 